So, Brother Lester Bankhead, I sat at this brother's feet for 10 years, and the focus of our office was churches and motels, and I still think that they're related, but the majority of the work, <laughs> the majority of the work was on churches and motels. And so I was working on the churches with Brother Bankhead that I began to notice as I began to study ancient Kemet that there were certain canons in the architecture of the church that were consistent with the canons that were developed by our ancestors, namely Imhotep, when he received what they called the Book of Foundations from Almighty God Ptah. The Book of Foundations. In this particular book, which the ancestors said that was given to Imhotep from God, they built continuously for 3,000 years based upon the foundation book that was written by M. Hotel. And it's coming down all the way to us today in the churches and cathedrals and basilicas throughout Europe, America, Asia, everywhere white folks have built a cathedral and basilica, the canon of those structures go all the way back to this brother who wrote the Book of Foundations. They'll tell you that it's, it's Marcus Vitruvius Polio who wrote the Book of Foundations, but they're lying, and I'm gonna prove it to you before we get done here. So it was with this brother, working with this brother for 10 years that I began to see the canons of our ancestors incorporated into the churches that we were designing even for our own people. See, we were the poor folks architects, as Bankhead always liked to say. The brother always had work. A lot of architects was hungry, coming starving, coming in the office, and they say, Brother Bankhead, how do you keep so much work? Brother Bankhead was as much a philosopher as he was an architect. Brother Bankhead says, uh, well, I'm a servant of the people. Have you ever heard tell of a servant being out of work? He would say things like that. He say things like there's no such thing as time. Something that our ancestors understood when the Dogon began to knot the ropes to count time for the ceremony which they called the Sigitolo that takes place every 60 years. Sometimes they knew they wouldn't be alive to see the ceremony, but they kept on knotting that rope, preparing for that ceremony because they knew that someday their son would be able to perform the ceremony. They knew there was no such thing as time, there's no such thing as death, that African people are perpetual and everlasting. This is a philosophy that this brother taught me for 10 years before I stepped out of his office and stepped into the world of ancient Kemet. We move on. And so you can see here that there were many triads in Kemet, and you see Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, or Jehovah. Well, this is where these concepts are coming from. As you can see, Horus on the, what is that, on your left? And Osiris, or Asar, Heru, let's do it right, Heru to your left, Asaru in the center, and Aset, to your, to your right. Aset being Isis, Aseru being Osiris, and Heru being Horus. This was the first, well not the first, one of the most important triads or trinities in ancient history. And so, Imhotep was so tough that he got to be a part of a trinity. As you can see, Ptah here, and Imhotep in the center, and Selkmet here, he was said to be the son of Ptah and Selkmet, Imhotep. The, brothers le the legend about the brother grew so much over 3,000 years that he was walking with the gods in the universe. This is how powerful this brother was. And this is a sign and a symbol to our children that someday, yeah, little Kevin, someday, little Tom Mary, someday, little Saniata Jr., y'all can walk in the heavens and the universe with the ancestors and the gods. If you visualize it, you can do it. And Imhotep is the proof. We move on. The Masons know it. The Masons know it. Right. See, y'all driving down Wilshire, looking to your right, looking to your left, never looking up to see what's on the wall. Can't see the stars now for the street lamps out on the street. I'm just I'm not teasing. I ain't mean y'all. I'm talking about, you know, the mother folks outside didn't come here tonight. <laughs> because, uh, you know, y'all, I'm glad y'all didn't go to the club to get down and get funky tonight and come in here to seek knowledge and wisdom with us who are seeking knowledge and wisdom here this evening. But the, the Masons got right here on Wilshire. This is a, what we call architectonics. Architectonics is when you design a theme right into the building. And what they've designed here on the roof here, the roof, the projection of the roof is symbolic of Frank Lloyd Wright, a man who was known for his roof projections. This represents modern architecture. Around the side of the building here, we're going to go here and show you a little close up. On the side of the building here, you can see Imhotep right there on Wilshire. They don't even use his Greek name, got his African name, Imhotep. So-called Negroes driving right by and don't even know the brother, see the brother right here, and dread it, the brother, the Zoser got dreadlocks like Bob Marley, sitting right on Wilshire. You're on your way to work with so much stress on you, trying to get there to do the nine to five, you can't even see the brother on the wall. 
on Wilshire. But the Masons are saying that this brother represents the first monumental st structure known to man, the, fr the first masonry, the first great builder, which they call Merket. That's what they call the architects in Kemet, the Merket, the ones who struck the core on the sacred ground. So the Merket Imhotep is right on Wilshire, and then the architectonic expression is saying that it's from the Africans that architecture began. Going down to Hammurabi and the Babylonians, and on down to the Greek or Roman world, and Christopher Wren at the end of the building, where Christopher Wren designed over 52 churches in England after the Great Fire. And we turn the corner today, brothers, sisters. We turn the corner, and there's old George standing there. You know, George with the Capitol building, D.C., in the background, showing you that even D.C. has to go back and pay homage to M. Hotel. M. Hotel and the African origin of Western architecture. So we're going across from George. We can see here on the back of the building as we turn the corner, oh, Albert Pike here. Albert Pike, a Freemason who wrote a very important book on Freemasonry. We ain't going to get into that too much. But I'll suffice it to say that old Albert Pike, Pike said, the day the Negroes, or the, put it in his own words, the day the niggers joined the lodge is the day I leave. That's what, that's what Albert Pike said. And if I can't back that up, I'll eat all these slides, eat this stick, eat the podium. But that's what he said. He said the day the niggers join the lodge or the masons is the day that he'll leave. That's what he said. And so uh, sitting right behind him is a pyramid right behind him. Let's go back. You got, let's go back. You got Imhotep here who, who designed the first pyramid. You saw Imhotep. He didn't look like Charleston Heston and Ewell Brenner. And right behind his head is the pyramid. The pyramid showing that in architectonics that the pyramid builders of Kemet or Egypt gave birth to the Greco-Roman world, as you see the columns below the pyramid. Architectural theme right behind the man that said he's going to leave the lodge when the niggas came in. We move on, and you can see this. This is the Scottish Rite Temple in Washington, D.C. That's the temple that's behind him. I didn't know that till I went to D.C. I said, dang, that's the temple behind old Pike's head. <laughs> so behind old Pike's head is a pyramid on top showing you the, the ionic columns here where Kemet or Egypt gave birth to the Greek or Roman world. You say, now, brother, you might be stretching this stuff. Brother Matthew, I don't believe you. Let's see. Let's, let's, let's chase this thing. Let's see. He even got the Sphinx out front to put a period, an exclamation point on it. The pyramids giving birth to the Greek or Roman world. Right there in Washington, D.C., the Scottish Rite Temple. So if that wasn't enough, if you just looked up when you went downtown, you would have noticed the step pyramid right on top of City Hall. That gave birth to the temple, the Greco-Roman world. What did, what did Pike say? I want y'all to tell me. What did he say? The day the niggas came, that he's going to leave, right? The brother, well, he should never join. You see the step pyramid right there on top of City Hall? There it is right there. But this is just your wild-eyed Afrocentric concepts. You can't subject your passion to reason, is what they say about us. The first monumental structure, the only one that you don't have to wonder about, finds his way on top of City Hall, got a mare sitting up, up, up there, and don't even know it itself probably, maybe he does. Nonetheless, it's there on top of City Hall. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> then you went right by the library. You didn't look up at the library. Some of us don't even go to the library. I'm not talking about y'all because y'all are in the bookstore. I know y'all go to the library. But you can see the flame of wisdom, the sacred fire, where Greece and Rome received the flame and light from Kemet, the sun people. Well, you see the philosophers, Dante and Homer and all them down here, where they received their light from Egypt. This is called architectonics, when a theme is expressed in the architecture. We move on, walk through the door, look up. You'll see the Greek, where he has learned from the sun children, the Egyptians, right over the door as you walk in the library. Let's go down tomorrow, Saturday, you don't have to go to work. 
Go down there and check it out. We move on. We can see. You know, this one looked kind of weak here. They kind of softened it up. But I wanted to show you I'm in Nimhead and Thutmose and Tutmose and the Kings. We're going to be showing you in a minute. Well, you can see, look at the jaw and the lips here, the prognathous jaw and thick lips. Looks just like your jaw when you were shaving this morning, brother. No European got no lip and no jaw like that. Come on now, wake up. USC, in the library, at USC. Just walk in the library, walk up the stairs, look to your right, 